they know us and they trust us. And uh, we have obviously excellent talents that um, not only do great software, but they can execute projects, which is uh, part of what makes us different as well. It's digital trade show time. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? John Stamper, and welcome to another episode here on the Digital Trade Show. Love these opportunities to speak with companies that are doing really cool things in the digital space. I feel like so much of our world is digital, and we're definitely going to get into that uh, with my guest, uh, Alessandra, today from Scopic Software. But there's always a human element, right? I mean, even when you think about software, which we're going to get into today, uh, what I was really fascinated about when I was learning about Scopic um, is the experience kind of behind the coding, right? Behind the computer. Not only that, um, but Alessandra is actually in Madrid, Spain, which is amazing as we're recording this. And as you're going to learn, her team uh, is all over the world. So Alessandra Papini, who's the sales manager at Scopic, it's so great to have you. How are you doing? Great. It's great to see you again, John. Um, Madrid, of course, is a great city to be in right now. We have great weather. Summer is just starting. And that's the beauty of guess of working remotely, right? That's why so many people are now more drawn to that. Um, at Scopic, we've been doing it since the beginning. So for almost 15 years now. So it's kind of like the modus operandi and um, everyone at Scopic is either, you know, like a digital nomad style where they're traveling and they're working from everywhere or they just enjoy working from home and have, you know, adapted to that life very well. Yeah, I love that. So Alessandra and I met uh, at, uh, we were at the um, Mobile Dentistry Conference uh, in early February. And so we actually, our booths were right next to each other. So I got to like listen in to a lot of the conversations uh, that she was having with those in the dental industry. And and, and Alessandra, I know that uh, Scopic is doing software for companies in all industries, but I know dentistry, which is we're going to focus on a little bit today, has been an industry that you all are very excited about. You can add a lot of value for companies, especially when I look at kind of the explosion of technology and, and companies growing in dentistry of where you can all help. I know you actually even have a couple of companies that that we know that we've worked with you know, together that you're helping out with. So yeah, I was trying to think maybe a good place to start is frame out for everybody, you know, who is Scopic? Uh, specifically like how you're helping companies when it comes to custom software and more importantly, like helping their visions get realized, you know, through technology. Yes, of course. Well, Scopic, like I said, started 15 years ago. Um, Tim Burr is the CEO and he founded the company uh, being uh, an engineer himself. And he had a vision, right, of having a fully remote company where we can have people all over the world helping clients build software products. Um, so we've been doing that and we have already more than 280 people around the world. And I think that's part of what uh, makes us different, right? Because we can adapt and have teams allocated to projects who are working almost around the clock because we have people in Asia, in Europe, in Latin America. Um, so we can adapt very easily to any type of time zone and project. Um, and we do custom software. So that's, let's say, the base and the, the core of what we do. We do um, custom software from mobile apps to web apps, desktop applications, everything really. Um, now, obviously, we're doing a lot of AI and AI proof of concepts and that type of development. Um, and then we have, let's say, um, side type of services that are more oriented towards um, very niche uh, specific uh, services like cloud management, maintenance services, digital marketing, and even staffing. So... It, we really try to be a very flexible partner. So we try to adapt also to the, um, let's say, the stage where clients are at. So let's say someone already has developed a product and they're just looking for someone who will come in and integrate with their team. Um, so that's how the staffing came, came to be about. Um, so overall, the whole mission of Scopic is to become a partner that clients can trust. First of all, I think that's important in terms of software. We're not someone who's invisible. You know, we they know us and they trust us. And um, we have obviously excellent talents that um, not only do great software, but they can execute projects, which is uh, part of what makes us different as well, which is the project management and the leadership that we have in our teams. Um, 
So in terms of what we are doing on a day-to-day basis, we try to make what seems complex uh, much more simplified through great quality software. And we guide the clients from start to finish. So someone who comes from a non-tech background will have you know, a very one-on-one custom approach in terms of we guide them through the process of building the idea, taking the requirements and make it something very tangible and then agreeing on a timeline, on a scope, on a budget, especially, and adhering to that and executing that from start to finish. So that is the core of what Scopic does. Um, Obviously, like I said, there's other little bits and pieces of services that we do, but all in all, we want to be a one-stop shop, uh, a solution provider that is going to help you build everything around technology and get you up to speed in terms of what the industry is doing and help your business become much more efficient um, and have a, a great engagement from your customers. So there was a couple of reasons why uh, I wanted to have this conversation. Number one, uh, I have been there. When I started my first company, I went down this software path and I learned a ton of lessons. And so as uh, you and I were having more conversations and I was thinking about today's entrepreneur or today's company, I feel like, Alessandra, there's a big gap. And what I mean by that is there's a gap between a company wanting to create a website to maybe market their business. Their business doesn't operate, you know, on necessarily that platform, right? It's if you really look at it, it's that that website per se is informational in nature, right? It's a place where people can learn about you. And then I feel like there's the other side of the spectrum is where your business and how you're serving your customers really depends on a good solid you know, piece of software, custom software that is designed to what you're offering. And so I don't really feel like there's any in between, Alessandra. I think like that's where a lot of companies struggle is, is it's like, okay, well, we can do some of these basic things, but when it comes to realizing our vision, that's where we struggle. We don't always know where to go to. And it can be one of those parts of your business where if for whatever reason, you make the wrong decision in the beginning, it can be very painful. (laughs) And so I just, again, like in learning about Scopic and and building this relationship that you and I have and being excited about the work you guys are starting to do to dentistry, that's why I just wanted to kind of have you on because I think that there's a lot of things that inspiring companies and entrepreneurs can learn about how to do this right the first time. And and, and, and as you spoke, you know, you're very passionate, rightfully so, about your team because that's a big piece of it. So I thought maybe we'd kind of go there a little bit as well is when you talk about the experience and this global experience your team has, what does that mean to a company that does need to have somebody help them build something? Yeah, sure. And I think, first of all, we started out Scopic with, let's say, a very specific niche of customers and that's always been entrepreneurs so still up to this date our base core let's say clients are entrepreneurs who came to us with an idea and not really knowing how to go about it right so custom software is usually very scary when you think about you know everything that needs to go behind you know the execution of a project that involves back-end, front-end infrastructure, and then you touch things on, you know, cloud security and things like that, and um, how to go about user experience and user interface and things like that. So we are very used to this type of, let's say, um, client profile who really comes with very little knowledge of what to do or even how to go about it or how much time it will take, how much money it will take as well, because obviously it's it suffers an investment and you like you said, you want to get it right the first time. And we've had so many clients who come to us and say, I did it completely wrong the first time I went through, you know, the whole, let's go with the cheapest available option. And it ended up being, you know, a very tragic and traumatic experience. So I think what we've learned in this past 15 years of doing, you know, dealing with this type of customer is really going into the very beginning of trying to build what we call a PLC and an MVP. So we really focus on, you know, having a discovery with the client together, guiding them with both solution architects and UX UI designers who are, let's say, the leaders at the very first stage of trying to um, draw out what is going to be a very minimal viable product. So what is the essential that the customer needs? How can we focus and make something that, is going to be 
off in the market really quickly and that they'll be able to get also feedback from their customers as to what needs to be improved in the software itself. Um, so we definitely try to engage customers first into this phase of trying to get that very specific requirement and scope um, to the minimal basis that is going to be enough to prove what they want to prove in terms of business concept. And then we, let's say, take that and develop that. And then it's a, um, it's a matter of going into phases and exploring a little bit more in terms of features. Um, so we go step by step with these types of customers. Um, obviously, like you said, most of these people you know, are also looking even to things like marketing and how they're going to go about um, their, their end customer learning about their product. So that's also something that we tend to integrate very well. We have, you know, a very, um, let's say, um, multi-talented uh, team that does everything from making sure that the campaigning and the branding and all the, let's say, more, more lead generation side is, is also um, very much aligned with what the client is looking for. And then the software side, you know, in, in terms of, you know, having something, a product that looks very, not very neat, very sleek, and that is meeting, you know, what, what, what they're trying to achieve as a business. So I would say that for customers who are, you know, in that type of um, space where they really are entrepreneurs, they're not, not very accustomed to working with technology, we bring in, you know, experts that are going to be leading you from the get go in this very phase that we call discovery or development of an MVP, which I think is what clients really like because they really want to go into something very small and they don't want to really see anything that's going to be taking up a lot of time or investment. So they, I, th I think to us, starting small has always been a recommendation for this type of customer. Yeah. And that's a big point that you just made, because I think in a lot of cases, like the experience that your team has to work with an entrepreneur that is very excited about this vision and what it could get to and all of that. Like I've been there, like we're always thinking in a lot of cases bigger <laughs> than what the initial piece has to be. And so I think to have a trusted team um, that can guide you along that path uh, is key. All right. So I want to make a parallel between dentistry and custom software encoders. So one of the things that really intrigued me about Alessandra and learning more about Scopic was the conversations we had about like her team, the coders, because I've always felt it's kind of the same way in dentistry, Alessandra, where uh, dentists and their teams are nice people, yet it's people don't like going to the dentist, right? I know it's not necessarily the, the team that they're going to see when they go to the dentist. It's more of like what's going to get done, but the dentist and the hygienist and the dental assistant, they get kind of roped into that unfairly. And so I think sometimes it's the same way in coding, right? Like I think that coders and people that build software are a little bit kind of a mystery, right? Like what are these, who are these people? And I think one of the things that I loved about our initial conversation was your passion towards the people on the Scopic team. They are real people. They yeah. love what they do. And so I know that we have some plans down the road here in the next couple of months to actually start to, you know, highlight some of those individuals and bring this human aspect of coding to you as a customer so that when you are making these decisions to do this, you realize that you actually are working with a team of people that really do know and understand in a lot of cases how to help you go from where you are to where you want to be. So let's just maybe, maybe talk about that, like your team as coders and, you know, how to demystify that to the world. Yeah, sure. And it's definitely a very interesting, let's say, type of um I would say reputation that software has, right? And and engineers in general. Um, I will for sure say that we still have, you know, the typical very nerdy and introvert engineer. But we what we think is critical for clients at least and, and even for us in, in the management side as well, is to really have key people in the leadership roles that really, first of all, obviously inspire and can communicate well. And can guide the client in a way that's, you know, uh, very approachable. And I think having a cultural affinity as well to, to, to our customers. So as you know, most of our customers are in the U.S., but we also have customers in Europe, Australia and other places. And, you know, our leadership and the people who are on the technical side, like the project managers, the operational managers, the technical leads and those types of 
um, let's say, roles are key at Scopic because those are the more client-facing roles. So establishing trust and guiding the client in that very early stage with these people that, you know, are very vocal. They are people who uh, have really been in the company for most of the cases, more than seven years, um, but at least more than five years in the company. And um, I think uh, what, when we hear about, you know, what clients like most is that they build this relationship, close relationship with um, these individuals. And you also got to know one of them um, in the conference uh, who is 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 working in, in from Portugal and he's been a project manager at Scopic for more than three years now. And he's really someone who, you know, the clients trust and that's what we want. We want the client to engage, you know, in the key people that are leading the project. And obviously there will be interactions with the rest of the team of engineers and designers and quality assurance. Um, you know, there's a lot of components that each individual team has in terms of talent and um, the technology behind it. But obviously the leadership to me is what makes us, you know, stand out um, because those key people are bringing um, uh, clients, let's say, who are a bit scared at first of what, what's to come and what, what to expect and how do engineers, you know, communicate? Um, are they going to be, you know, not sharing any, you know, information about, you know, things that are not coding related? So building that relationship is what we always tell our clients that's number one. Uh, for us from down to from sales which is a, let's say the first touch point to then the project management um operations and the leadership within the engineering team so those roles are really key for us so we also are very picky in terms of how we hire people because of that we've developed our own tool of also um let's say um screening candidates much better uh, so we have perfected the art of hiring in that regard for IT roles. And we not only look for technical skills, but we also look for soft skills as well. I love that. When you work for a software company and you actually need to create a new process, you just lean on your team and create a software to help you do that. It's brilliant. Excellent. I love it. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, the perks of the job. Uh you know, you know, it's interesting when I look back at the experience I had to build a large site, what I never realized, Alessandra, was how much communication I was going to have with the team. Uh, and, and it really is, it's important because looking back on that experience, I think to myself, you need to make sure that you feel comfortable, you know, communication wise, all that with who you're working with. And I think not only that, but let's let's also talk about the elephant in the room is that I'm an inspiring entrepreneur. I have this big vision. Sometimes I'm a type A personality. I have a lot of excitement. And you're going to match that with, in some cases, the engineer brain of a developer, you know, different personalities, different energy, different dynamics. And yet when you look from afar, that combination really works as long as, like you said, you know, the, the, your software team is there. They can understand kind of who you are, but they also have the experience to work with a lot of people that have these big ideas, right? I mean, I, I can think of sitting in the shoes of a developer and having all these ideas come their way, all the things that your team has heard over the years and trying to make that happen. Uh, and then, of course, being able to direct that into a project, like you mentioned, um, to execute and to make that vision a reality. So it's very important. I'm very excited for future conversations we're going to have with your team on bringing them to, you know, the forefront of like, Hey, you know, here, here is a Scopic team. They're developers. They're really smart. They're really cool. And they're easy to work with. Right. And all this yeah. other stuff, like really good coding and things like that. So. And that, and that, what, what you just said, easy to work with. Um, and that is one thing that we see time and time again, when we get our reviews and, you know, platforms like clutch and all these things that uh, we really, you know, nail down that part of really being flexible and also easy to work with. I mean, when you're working on a software project, it's like building a house, right? You really have sort of like a blueprint when you start, but then the house, you know, you 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 want a table, but it ends up being a red table with, you know, I don't know, something coming out of it from this side and 
you know, four legs or five legs. So it really can change in, in let's say, the lifetime of how a project starts. So becoming flexible and really being open and transparent to the client as to, hey, the scope is actually now going to increase if we do this. And are you comfortable assigning, um, you know, X amount of more hours to the project? Or do you want to come down to, let's say, an hour burn rate that's more reasonable for your budget right now? So we try to meet the client where they are. And I think that's very important when it comes to software, because like I said, it's custom things can change and the customer might need something that they don't even know that they need it. And midway they want to add it, but they just don't know how much that will add to, to the scope and to the whole world budget. So having great communication and having the client understand that technical side in a very easy way is something that we see time and time again makes us, you know, um, let's say, or or makes us retain customers also a, a lot. Um, because we're easy to work with and flexible. And that's number one when it comes to building custom software. Yeah, I love that. Well, and again, if if hearing Alessandra, everybody is just a highlight. I mean, super knowledgeable, super passionate about Scopic. I think just about this space. I think as, again, as we continue to speak with more of the Scopic team, you're going to, you're getting an idea of what that is like. And I think that's why I was so excited to, you know, um, have this conversation, have more people, you know, whether it be in dentistry, which is obviously an industry that I've worked in for many years, as you know, as well as some others, learn about all of you because you know software is not going anywhere. I also feel like uh, everything is kind of a, a, a current draft, right? I think that's kind of another learning thing I took away is you're never really done. And so the last question that I wanted to ask you is is uh, a lot of people ask this when it comes to software, and that is, does it normally take longer than people think? And how are you all helping set the expectation for someone very excited uh, who wants to kind of, you know, see their idea in lights, manage those expectations? That's kind of the last thing I wanted to get your thoughts on. Yeah. And that's something that my team is responsible for. I mean, um, we see this every day, right? Um, Coming and going to a client call and then, you know, the big deadline that says, oh, we need an app done in two months. <laughs> and then they want the app to have all these integrations and, you know, um, bells and whistles, let's say. <laughs> so that's something that we do on a day-to-day basis, right? Setting expectations. And that really starts, John, by, you know, taking them through our portfolio. We have a vast portfolio. In the last 15 years, we've done basically any type of software that exists out there. Um, with with whichever technology that you can imagine, right? From big to really complex solutions for, you know, Fortune 500 companies. So given that experience, we come and we say, okay, this is the type of software that you guys are looking for. Based on experience and the history, you know, it could take roughly around this amount of time. Now, we also lay out the things that might affect or, you know, might reduce or increase the scope. So, Early on, we say, okay, this is the minimal base of what you need because of the complexities in the back end and, 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 or the front end or whichever case might be. And if you decide to add this additional feature, let's say, then the scope is going to increase to maybe one more month or two more weeks. It really depends. So we try to be very, let's say, like you said, very transparent in those first initial calls. So that the client really tells us, you know, actually, I was more thinking about four weeks, eight weeks. How can we make it down to more of that range? And then, you know, we try to reach a middle ground where we say, hey, it's definitely not going to take, you know, maybe the initial amount of time that you thought. But, you know, if we bring in this amount of people in the team and, you know, we maybe reduce some of the scope that you initially wanted, then we can reach that, you know, to more of a middle, um, let's say, deadline of what you were looking for. Um, So it's being transparent, understanding that there has to be some flexibility, but there has to be also some minimal ground that the client understands, okay, if I really want a mobile app that has all these integrations and, you know, in the dental space, for instance, if you want payments, if you want um, scheduling appointments, if you want encryption and messaging and all of this, you know, it will be a minimum amount of time for that. Now we can definitely phase out the project 
And I think breaking it up is what in most cases clients go with, you know, and trying to understand what's the minimum and then how can we then build that on once we have more feedback from our customers or once we can generate even some revenue out of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I Listen, I say this, I'm going to scream from the tops. I have been there. I have lived this process. If you are an entrepreneur, you're a company, take a lot of the things that Alessandra said today seriously. I mean, it, I mean, it is a, there's such a dynamic between the balance of being excited and understanding something that in many cases, you don't understand. You don't understand. That's okay, right? I think that's a big piece of, of all of this. So, uh, Alessandra, I would love to have you let everybody know as we wrap, um, kind of how you know the process. Like for anybody that's watching this, that you know, even just wanted to have a discovery call to learn about Scopic, let them know how that works. I know you and your team kind of manage that. And like I said, everybody, uh, much much more with the Scopic team. This was just kind of the beginning. I wanted you all to learn a little bit about Alessandra and Scopic and all of that, but we're going to, we're going to, you know, continue this on in the next couple of months um, to get even to deeper with their team and all of that. But any final thoughts? And I think most importantly, like what's the best way for people to get in touch with you so that they can set up a discovery call? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, well, our team is pretty, let's say 24 seven, almost around the clock because I have all over the world, but the easiest way to reach to us is, uh, email us at sales at scopicsoftware.com. That's the easiest uh, because that will be directly to our inbox and we have five people ready to attend the call in almost every time zone. Um, the second part would be to go on our website, uh, scopicsoftware.com and go on the contact us page and we get uh, also an email from that. We even have a, a chat bot that is also easy and um, very interactive to work with. So those three ways, I would say, are the main ways to get in touch for sure. Awesome. Well, Asanda, this is great. I was excited for this. Uh, I'm excited for you know learning more and 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 re- quite honestly, more people learning more about the great work you all are doing. I mean, we we didn't even get into the whole AI part of this, but that's a whole other episode uh, for a lot of companies that want to build their foundation and their company really kind of with the end in mind, right? Being being starting to think about where AI comes in and and the expertise that you all have there. So more to come on that, everybody learn more about Scopic. They're doing some great work. I can't wait for you to, you know, get in touch with them. And uh, Alessandra, always a pleasure. Thank you, John. It was great to chat a little bit about, you know, what makes our world, um, you know, unique and trying to, you know, make customers not feel as frightened as they usually would with, you know, when they see the word engineering and coding. So it was a pleasure to talk to you as always and excited for what's to come and bringing, you know, all these talented individuals up into the stage and having them share their knowledge uh, with the world. Yep. I can't wait. All right. To be continued, everybody. Thanks, Alessandra. Thank you. Thank you, John. Take care. Take care.